you, God. Thank you for just another day of life. Thank you for the chance to be here together and that we have this opportunity to fellowship with one another. Lord, I want to pray that we'll just take advantage of it and listen to what the speaker says and just worship you. Amen. Come and worship with us.
All right, good morning, Emmanuel. How we doing? Good, 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 good morning. It is, again, so wonderful to be here. It was great on Tuesday being able to get a little glimpse of the play that, again, you could have seen last weekend. You can always go Saturday and Sunday this week as well to be able to see it. I've heard it's fantastic. If it's anything like any of the other things that our performing arts group puts on, it is going to be a blast for sure. Today, we kick off a new series called Momentum Matters. When I was in youth ministry work for 10 years, 10 years in youth ministry work, I even count the year and a half I've been here, so 11 and a half, one of the big questions I would get from students, how do I keep the momentum going? Especially, you go up to winter camp, you go to summer camp, yeah, for those of you here at Emmanuel, you're, you, you eventually you'll go uh, on vacations over the summer. You'll leave campus. You won't have chapels on Tuesday and Thursday anymore. You won't have Bible class. And it's like, Mr. G, how do I keep the train going down the track? It's a big question. It's an important question to answer. And today, Tuesday and Thursday of next week, you will be provided from three speakers with what it takes to keep the momentum going. How do you ensure that you don't just stall out? And you stay fired up and dialed into what God desires for you to be doing in and around your life. Today, you'll be hearing from a gentleman who came last year. This guy did a phenomenal job. He's from a church in the Clovis Fresno area, Le Legacy Church. He is the youth pastor there. He's been there for three, three and a half years now. It's an awesome guy. It's been a pleasure for me to get to know him. He's a fantastic pastor. What he preaches is how he lives out his life. So let's give a warm Emmanuel welcome to Pastor Jordan King. Well, good morning. Can you hear me okay? All right. I just want to say thank you all for having me here again. Um, yeah, I got to come last year, and it was uh, it was awesome. You guys were great, and uh, just an honor to get to come um, share just God's heart with you all, and uh, you know, kicking off this series, momentum. That's no pressure here. I'm, I'm actually uh, grateful to have the the privilege and the opportunity to start this off because I think uh, what what God has for you today is really crucial for for what um, you guys are going to be talking about and, and learning about as far as uh, keeping the momentum going. But before we get into that, yeah, I just want to reintroduce myself and Jordan. Uh, like it was shared, I'm, I've been the youth, path, uh, youth pastor at Legacy Christian Church for about three years now, and it's, it's been an honor to be there. Um, I do, I'm married. I've uh, been married to my wife for almost seven years now, and uh, we moved out here to Fresno in 2019. And then in 2022, we welcomed, we welcomed a precious baby girl into the world. I think we have a picture there somewhere, but... Um, if not, it's okay. I gave a picture to show. Not sure if you can see it super well. But yeah, that's my family. It's my wife. It's my little girl. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I love them. <laughs> um, just a little bit about my background. Um, so I actually, I grew up in L.A. And I, uh, I came from a family where we, you know, we went to church on Sundays. We talked about it. We read our Bibles. But... You know, we, we kind of talked the talk, but we didn't really walk the walk. There was a lot of inconsistency um, when it came to, to our faith. Um, we definitely claimed to be Christian and, and thought that we were about it, but the way our lives were lived were not very congruent with um, Scripture, or with, with how God would have us live. And so that kind of set me on this uh, path where I, I found throughout my walk with Jesus, and maybe it would have been the same regardless, but I constantly felt myself kind of up and down and up and down, and sometimes... I was feeling really, really good about my relationship with God. Like, I was here. I was on a high. Things felt right. Things felt good. And then it didn't take much for me to, like, be at a low point and feel like, man, I just feel like I can't live this out. I feel like I'm struggling constantly, constantly. How many of y'all have ever felt that in your own life? Show of hands. Yeah, I see almost every hand up. It's true, right? It's something that we all experience. And so today I want to hopefully give some encouragement on how how we can keep that fire going and, and not have to just be up one moment and down one moment, but we can have consistency and joy in our walk with Jesus. And so we're going to look at a scripture real quick. It's from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 through 6. And this is what it says. It says, you yourselves are like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house 
to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So we have this scripture. How many of y'all have heard cornerstone before? Heard that word? Show of hands. How many of you feel confident about what a cornerstone actually is? Okay, some of you? Well, let's talk about that real quick, okay? Because it's important to know that. It's foundational to, to what we're talking about today. So historically, uh, the cornerstone, it was actually the most important part of any building. And I think we have a picture of that too, so you can see that. But um, basically, the total weight of a building, of a structure, rested on um, that stone, on the cornerstone. And um, so if you remove that cornerstone, the whole structure would collapse. But not only that, the cornerstone, it was like a reference point. So you can see it right there in the middle, right? Literally, like a cornerstone, a stone that goes in the corner, but is foundational for the rest of the structure. And that was like the reference point for builders, for where the rest of the building was going, how it would be built up. And if that was set in its proper place, then as they built out, they knew that the rest of the structure would be okay. It would, it would continue on. They could keep going, and it would be built up correctly. And so the scripture is kind of giving us this picture and helping us understand our own lives in relationship to Christ. Right? It says that we're like living stones, but Christ is the cornerstone. And so Christ being the cornerstone, we're like living stones that are being added on, ultimately being built up into something bigger as, as a spiritual house or the church, the people of God, right? So if your faith is in Christ, you are part of that. You are being built up. You are considered to be like a living stone being built up as a people of God. But what's more important than that is the cornerstone. Because remember, without the cornerstone, everything else falls apart. And so it's clear here in the scripture that Christ is the cornerstone He's the one that holds us up. He's the one who keeps us together. He's the one that ultimately keeps our momentum going. And he's our point of reference for a life that's uh, consistent and, and pleasing to God. And so with that, though, like in my life where I felt struggles, where I felt like kind of the ups and downs, I realized that a lot of times I was building my life off of something that off of a cornerstone, if you will, that wasn't firm, that wasn't solid, that wasn't Christ. And it's easy to do that, right? We could try to build our lives off of a number of things, whether they're bad, good, whatever the case. So, for example, maybe um, there's something difficult that's gone on in your life, right, that, that's become a point of reference for you that you look back at. And the rest of the direction of your life has kind of been based off of that one thing. I'll give you an example. Um, when I was about five, my parents divorced. And then a couple of years after that, my dad left to the other side of the country. Where, where he grew up in. That was a huge point of, in my life that impacted me. And oftentimes in my life, I look back to that moment, to that time, thinking of how I wanted to, to, to not be that, to not do that, and hopefully live my life another way. And, and I think those events also opened the door for, for something to happen to me when I was younger that actually opened the door for me to struggle more and more um, throughout my life with lust. And so... That kind of became a reference point that I would look back at and kind of set the foundation for me to struggle for a really long time in my life with certain sins. Feeling like I was just stuck, like I couldn't get out. And meanwhile, like I said, I grew up in church, so like Jesus, I, I believed in Jesus, but in reality, he was just another one of those pieces on the wall that was my life. A big piece, but he wasn't the foundation. But maybe it's not always bad things. Maybe sometimes it's good things that we try to build our life on, right? We use good things as our foundation. So like we said, maybe you go to camp or you have a moment in church and youth group where you have just an awesome encounter with God and you just feel so good. And there's like this high that just comes over you like, oh my gosh, God is amazing. And the way I felt when, when I encountered him, like I just want to feel that forever. Trust me, I've had moments like that. And so then that becomes a reference point for how we try to live the rest of our lives. And so we spend our lives chasing after a moment, chasing after a feeling that we once had. And it involved God, but that feeling wasn't God, right? It's still just a feeling. 
Or maybe we try to build our life off of the foundation of something that's not yet to happen, right? We have goals, we have dreams. We want to become, you know, we want to go pro in sports or we have dreams for, for what we want to achieve in our lives. But that's not a very reliable foundation either because all it takes is one little thing for that to change. And if that's what our foundation is built on, if that gets changed or that gets removed, everything could easily come crashing down. And we feel like we're stuck. We've lost our momentum. We don't know where we're going. We're in a rut. I know I've, I've gone through this many times in my own life. So I want you to remember from the scripture what we talked about, the cornerstone. The cornerstone, we said that if the cornerstone was set properly, the builders could be certain that the rest of the building would come together properly. If we hold Jesus in his proper position, the proper place that he deserves in our own lives, we make Christ the cornerstone, the foundation of our lives. Not just incorporate him as part of our lives, but he is our everything he is our rock, our foundation, then we can be certain that the rest of our lives, we have a secure foundation. It's like what we just sang in worship, right? Not just good words, but I will build my life upon your love, upon the person of Christ, because that is a firm foundation. And when we put our trust in him alone, like we just sang, we won't be shaken, because that is a foundation that will never be removed. It's there forever. So we want to be sure in our lives that we make Christ our foundation. And so the scripture reminds us that everything, everything hangs on the person of Jesus, and it hangs on us connecting with God through Jesus, right? And so it's, it's not just about chasing a good feeling or a good idea. It's about making Christ everything and, and, and doing everything we can to pursue God with all we have making him our foundation. And one of the ways that we can connect with God and ensure that we're, we're, we're doing that is through prayer. It's probably one of the most important things that we can do. I know prayer sometimes can be a little intimidating, right? We can kind of like make it seem like it's this really high, achieve, like high thing that's meant for the priests and the pastors and the holy people to do. But if I can just make it really simple for you, prayer is simply this. It's turning your eyes to focus on God and having conversation with him. It's that simple. But there are a few things about prayer that I want to encourage you with, um, just to keep in mind as you pursue prayer um, in connecting with God. Prayer, it, at first, it starts with intentionality. So we have to be intentional about coming before God. We got to be intentional about putting distractions aside and making time to just connect with God, putting away the phone, maybe turning off the TV a little bit early or removing yourself from things that are going to be distracting and getting to a place where, you know, you could just stop and focus and really just think about who God is and connect with him. For me, one of those places, I, I'll go into my closet, like I'll just close the doors. I'll go into my closet. I'll keep the lights off, no distractions. And that's a place where I can just stop. And focus on who God is. And talk to him. And it's a beautiful thing. And with that, prayer, it's not just about the words that we use. It's really not about the words that we use, but it's about the heart that we bring to God. Because we could sit there and ramble and ramble and ramble and, and try to, and maybe sometimes we don't even have words to say to God. But it's really about the heart that we bring to him and how we come before him that God sees. And he's given us the Holy Spirit to help us in that. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says this. It says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. So that's a beautiful thing. Sometimes there are just things that are just built up in your heart that you don't even have words for, but you just come before God and you bring that to him. And we know by his word that the Holy Spirit who's in us speaks on our behalf to God and he sees our hearts. 
And he knows what you want to say before you even say it. It's a beautiful thing. It's important when we come to God, we're talking about the heart, right? That we have a heart of reverence. And reverence just means honor, respect. See, God's not just our homie that we can talk to like however we want. He's not just the big guy in the sky that we kind of just like, yeah, whatever, you know. Like this is God, the creator of the universe, the very being who is giving you every breath that you are taking right now. That is God in heaven. So when we come before him, it's, it's really important that we at least just take a moment to think about that. Who are we about to talk to? And God is a loving father. He is our friend. He is gracious. He knows us. He's, he's gracious to us in our weakness. But it's really important that we, we just take a moment to think about who we are actually talking to when we pray. And that changes the game. That, that positions our heart to be ready to, to hear from God, too. In Ecclesiastes, it says, when you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It's evil to make mindless offerings to God, so don't make rash promises. Don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God's in heaven, and you're on earth. So let your words be few. And again, it just means think about who you're talking to before you even say anything. And ultimately, have a heart to listen, right? Prayer, it's not just about what you have to say to God. If it's a conversation, it means we have a responsibility to listen. Because God will speak to you. If you're coming to him wholeheartedly, sincerely, he knows what's in your heart, he's going to speak to you. He's a good father. And so make sure that you have a heart that's willing to listen. Don't just talk, but listen. You might hear him through his word when you spend time in the Bible. You could hear him through a message that somebody's preaching. You could hear him through maybe counsel from, from another godly person that you're talking to. There are different ways that we can hear God's voice. But it's important that you position yourself to actually listen and hear from him. And with that, the last point I want to make is that prayer requires patience. And it requires perseverance. It's easy for us to grow weary and tired, feeling like, man, God's just not listening to me. Like, I keep trying. I keep trying to go to him. I keep coming with him. I just want to feel that fire again. I want to feel something again. But I just feel like I'm not getting anything from God. And then we start to slow down. We start to fade away. And we start to remove ourselves from him. Right? But when we pray, we can expect that God will answer us. He will. We just got to be patient. Sometimes the answer isn't for us to have right away. But sometimes there's a process when we come to God. And we got to be willing to, to be able to sit with patience. Sit in the silence. And wait for God to speak. And then we'll know when he speaks, and it will be so much better. In Luke 18, um, Jesus tells a parable, but I'm not going to share the whole parable, but it basically prefaces it by saying Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. If you're trying to get in shape, if you're trying to be good at a sport, you're not just going to go to the gym one day. You're not just going to show up to practice one day and then expect that you're pro or expect that you're going to have big muscles. Right? It takes time. It takes commitment. It takes perseverance. It takes consistency. And then you start to see the results. And the same is true with prayer. Sometimes God will answer right away, but he might not always, and that's okay. Don't lose heart. God hears you. He cares about you. And so as I close, I just want to remind you guys, like, the Christian life, it's not about chasing a God high. It's not about chasing a good feeling or building on things that are not secure, things that can be taken from us and cause our whole world to be crashing down. The Christian life, it's not just about incorporating Jesus into your life, sprinkling him in on the wall, making him just a part of your life. It's about Jesus being your life, being your everything. He is the foundation on which we build. And from that place, man, you, you want to talk about momentum, Keep going to Jesus. Keep learning from him. Keep receiving from him. And, and you won't grow tired. You won't grow weary. Or if you start to feel like you, you're growing weary, come back to him. Remember who your foundation is and find strength in him. 
So this life is about knowing God who made us, who loves us, and, and who gave everything so that you could know him and be with him and live a life that is pleasing to him. Sharing the hope that you have with others. And that's such a beautiful thing. It's not just about spending eternity with God, right? There's, there's things that he's given us to do here on life. And so it's important that we're connected to him and growing in him and running after him with all we got until our very last breath. So I just want to encourage you. It starts by making him your cornerstone, your foundation, your everything, connecting with him. And again, one of the most important ways we do that is through prayer. So let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, I just thank you for the truth of your word, God. I thank you that regardless of where we are, regardless of how we feel about it, Lord, the truth of the matter, the, the fact, Lord, what you have done is you have established Christ as a cornerstone, Lord, in whom those that put their faith in him have life and are being, Father God, and we're being built up as your people. I thank you that we have a firm foundation, Father God, in which we could build our lives. And I pray that for every person here, Lord, wherever they're at right now, Lord, maybe they are building. I pray that you would help them to continue to build their lives on you, Father God, and to not grow weary, but to find strength and hope and peace and joy as they make you their, their rock, Lord, their foundation, their cornerstone. And for anybody here, Lord, that's been struggling to do that, or maybe is building on, on foundations that aren't um, solid, but things that aren't you, I pray that you would help them, Lord. Help them to begin to build their lives on you. I pray that they would put their full trust, their full faith, their full confidence in who you are, God. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would just fall upon each person here, opening their eyes and opening their hearts to receive from you, Father God, just a revelation of who you are. So that these wouldn't be just words that they hear, Father God, but truths that find a place in their heart. May you bless them today, Father God, and I just thank you again for the opportunity to share your heart, to share your word. And I pray that we would receive it now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for... Pastor Jordan and his heart, his desire to be able to bring forth your word in a powerful, um, very direct way that he has taken the time to, to process and pray and, and meditate on the scripture that was in front of him to bring forth your word this morning. Talking about, again, that you are the cornerstone of our lives and the only way that we keep our momentum going is that we have you as our foundation. And Lord, may we seek um, you in prayer as he presented to us, Lord, that, that we seek you each and every day um, as our Heavenly Father, because you are, you are available and willing and accepting of our prayers, Lord. I pray that you be with him at Legacy as he leads the youth ministry there, as he is a part of that church body. May you use him in a powerful way to reach the kids um, in that community and in that area. The things that he is doing is wonderful and powerful. May he continue to look to you to guide him and direct him and to be the leader in his life. May you be with him and his wife in the home with their beautiful and wonderful daughter, Sophia, Lord. May they be the parents that you have called them to be. May they love their daughter. May they pour into her. May they guide her closer to you. May he be the leader in his home that you desire for him to be as well, Lord. May he lead his wife in a loving and caring way. And may he lead his daughter in a loving and caring way as well, Lord. May you bless him today. May you bless him tomorrow and every day moving forward. We thank you for what he did for us today. Praise in your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Don't forget, real quick, a few reminders. Tonight, we got a big basketball game in the gym. Our boys are playing Bakersfield South. That's right. That's right. Big game. Let's pack out the house. Let's be loud. And then we got big games tomorrow, right? We got our girls who advance. They're playing a big game tomorrow night, so let's show up tomorrow night for that. And our boys' soccer team advance. That's what's up, so let's show up for that as well. 6 p.m. tonight, 6 p.m. tomorrow. Let's go, Emmanuel. See you, seniors. <laughs>